Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here and this is our off-road POV for the Ram 1500 TRX. So this is the bypass trail that I use to get to the rock crawling section for my off-road course. And I always do an off-road POV just to show you guys what the vehicles perform like within, uh, you know, smaller, tighter trails. And <laughs> you can see so far it is bumpy. I'm getting jostled all over the place. Now the one thing that's great about the TRX, uh, just like the Raptor, is it has so much ground clearance, so much articulation, that it can just handle so much uh, just because of that. Obviously it's got its super advanced Bilstein Blackhawk shocks. I really like these shocks. A lot of people, especially uh, on the Raptor side of things, we're talking crap on these shocks. Wow, that's bumpy. We're talking a lot of crap on these shocks when this truck was first released because they're technically only a diameter of 2.5 inches, but they can handle so much from a force perspective. I've never had overheating issues. I've got over 15,000 miles on this truck. A lot of those miles are hard off-road miles. And so I can tell you that the shocks have held up amazingly well. Now, you guys are probably noticing that, let me readjust here a little bit. You guys are probably noticing that it's pretty dang bumpy here on this trail. Sorry about that. I just had to fiddle with the GoPro a little bit because it was acting kind of wonky. Anyways, what I was saying is you guys are probably noticing there's quite a bit of bumping. Now this trail in general is just a bumpy trail, but this also does highlight a slight downside with the TRX compared to its counterpart, the Ford Raptor. And that is the fact that this has 18 inch wheels with 35s. Now 35s are great. 18 inch wheels are, you know, the proper size for off-roading, but the Raptor has 17 inch wheels. You can get it with 35s or 37s. And just because of that extra inch with the 17 inch wheels with the 35s and the extra three inches with the 37s and 17 inch wheels that you get in terms of padding within the sidewall, you get a much more compliant ride off-road. Um, you get a lot more, this is what I just call tire jitter basically. So the shocks are doing as much as they can to kind of get out all of the bumps and everything. But this stuff is handled better with tires than shocks. Uh, and so, you know, that being said, a Raptor's still gonna jitter a little bit over this, uh, but it's not gonna jitter nearly as much as the TRX. Uh, so basically, what you need to know is the TRX can go anywhere that the Raptor can go, but you'll be in a little bit more comfort with the Raptor. Ooh, I probably took that a little bit awkwardly. Um, so yeah, that's kind of a downside. Now, the other thing is, this trail, oh gosh, we hit so hard there. This trail represents, you know, I feel like a pretty typical off-road trail from a width perspective. Um, now, obviously I'm out in the middle of the desert, so I don't have nearly as much tree coverage as what you get in, you know, most of the US, it seems like for off-road trails, uh, but there is an area up here that has a little bit more tree coverage. Uh, but anyways, this highlights, you know, kind of an issue with the T-Rex again is the width of the truck. I can't really drive around the trail. I just have to drive through the trail. So that means that, you know, whatever comes in my path, I have to just go over it. So again, it kind of lends to a little bit of a bumpier ride. And it means that, you know, you probably should do some sort of form of paint protection on your vehicle. My truck is completely wrapped and has paint protection film on the front end, uh, just so that you don't scratch it up when you go against trees and everything. Oh my gosh, so bumpy. Makes me like teeth jitter a little bit. I mean, the shocks can handle this. Like the thing about these Blackhawk shocks is they are so crazy with the forces they can handle because, you know, they were engineered to be able to handle full compression with a truck that weighs like over 7,000 pounds and jumping it and all that kind of stuff. And they can do it. Now, another thing is it is 100 degrees outside and you guys can probably hear the fans with the TRX. Now, I've never had an overheating issue with the TRX. The fans seem to do a really good job with keeping the truck cool. That being said though, I feel like this truck does, you know, just because it's a big V, it does heat up a little bit quicker than the Raptor. But again, I'm not gonna cite that as a downside because everything that Ram has done from an engineering perspective to keep this engine cool works. Like I have been able to consistently thrash on this truck off-road in 100 plus degree weather. And I've never, I've never had to like stop and, you know, do the whole 
opening the hood of shame moment where you have to sit there because your vehicle's overheating. Never had that happen with the T-Rex. Uh, now a trail like this would probably increase the chances of that happening if it were to happen because you know I'm constantly brake throttle, brake throttle, and I'm not going very fast. So I don't have a bunch of you know fast moving air to go through and circulate through the engine and to kind of cool things off. This basically, ha that within a trail like this, I basically have to rely on the whole fan system. And yeah, T-Rex does, like I said, it can handle it, but it's not necessarily the most comfortable all the time. And also I feel like I'm wasting the power of the truck. Like if I was just going on a trail like this, just to explore the off-road, like, I'm not gonna use all 702 horsepower. I'm gonna use like 50, <laughs> right? And so that's that's another thing that I see is like a slight downside is just the fact that like this, ha it's so cool that it has, um, it's just parking sensors because of the dust. So it's, it's just kind of sad because it's like, oh, it's got all this power, but it's like, I'm, in a lot of off-road circumstances, unless you have wide open desert, which I happen to have here in Utah, you aren't really gonna use it. Okay, so this is the tree section that I was telling you guys about. Um, and this is what you would probably experience on the east coast of the US, you know, Colorado, um, Seattle. Obviously this is a lot drier, right? Because we're in the high altitude deserts of Utah. But you guys can see I'm just constantly, you know, giving myself some high fives from the trees, right? And so again, that does kind of show you a slight downside with the width of this truck. Uh, and I believe the T-Rex is a little bit wider than the Raptor. I don't know if the track is actually wider, but the body itself is wider and it's noticeable. Like when I park this in my garage, I can actually perceive the difference between the two trucks in terms of the width. Like it is, it's not just like, you know, oh, it is wide, it's wider on paper, but it doesn't feel like that in person. Like when you, when you are parking this truck and everything, you can actually, you can actually feel it. Man, this looks like it's gotten dug out a little bit more. I am scared of hitting my sidestep. So we're gonna go really slow over this because these sidesteps just like to um, collide with the ground all the time. They are low hanging fruit on the truck. But what I will say is these sidesteps are super heavy duty. Like I've had some pretty gnarly collisions with rocks and you know, I don't know if these side steps can technically hold the weight of the TRX, but I can tell you that, you know, I've, I've popped down onto them and uh, frame perfectly straight and no damage on the door or anything in the side steps. Like they don't, like they, they don't look like they've taken any damage either. So uh, big plus with that. And I mean, if you look at them, they're pretty chunky. They are pretty dang chunky. That is for sure. What gear am I in? Oh, it's in first gear. I feel like I'm getting, oh, I was gonna say, I feel like I'm getting no, you know, engine braking. But then I remembered the TRX has a 3.55 axle ratio. Now, the reason that Ram did that, I'm assuming, is for axle health because of how much power this has and for fuel economy. Because if this had like a 410 like the Raptor, then I mean, I, <laughs> I can only imagine what the fuel economy would be. It's already pretty bad. Um, but that being said, this definitely just rolls really fast because 355 is just, I mean, it's its okay, but it's not great. Now, obviously I do have low range. I could use that, but you know, on a trail like this, there's no point in my personal opinion because it just goes from high speed to low speed sections so fast. When I say high speed sections, I mean like 20 miles an hour. So, yeah, you guys can see that the T-Rex is doing fine overall. And I, yeah, I think this is a perfect day to really highlight the reliability of this truck. Because again, at over 15,000 miles with probably the world's most used and abused T-Rex and no overheating issues. Now I do, you know, take this into the service department for maintenance every three to 4,000 miles because it always needs an oil change. And so I am, you know, very on top of things with this truck. And obviously rightfully so, not because it's unreliable, but because, you know, with all the stuff that I'm using this truck for, gotta make sure that everything's good. And I always ask the, uh, I always ask the guy in the service department, hey, did you guys find anything on the truck? They're like, nope. 
it, it's usually oil change, you know, sometimes air filter change, you know, cabin air filter, normal stuff. Like they, they never, they never find anything. And that's something that's really impressed me with the TRX. This is the start of our hill climb. And this is uh, typically the last part of the point of view drive. Uh, and it's basically just to show you guys, you know how a vehicle's engine performs at already high elevation and then climbing up a hill on top of that. And some of these trails here are a little bit higher speed. Now you guys probably also noticed that I didn't air down the tires. I did that on purpose because for all of these reviews, I've just been keeping the tires at roughly what they are set at with the manufacturer. Now you guys can see I've got a tire pressure light on. Um, the PSI is at 36 for most, 30, okay, 36, 35, 37, 37. Factory set PSI cold, for cold rating is 38. So I'm within where I should be, right? Um, it just has the sensor trip because the tires went down to like 29 because it got really cold. Utah has crazy temperature swings. Um, but anyways, the reason that I don't air down the tires for these videos is first off, I don't have an air compressor. <laughs> and secondly, I want to highlight the shocks on vehicles. And the best way to highlight shocks is to not air down the tires because the tires kind of act as a secondary shock absorber. And so if you don't have the tires aired down, it forces you to purely rely on just what the shocks do. You hear those fans working. This is a very narrow trail and it's like super far drop off on either side. It's always kind of nerve wracking. Okay, now this part right here, it's a steep hill. This is just gonna show you guys tire grip with the truck. Um, and, you know, again, crawl ratio with the TRX. I have to press the brake pedal a lot more with this truck. Um, so I, so far I've taken quite a few vehicles down here. Now notable, you know, off-road vehicles I've taken on this is like my Jeep Wrangler Rubicon 392 and the Ford Raptor. And the Ford Raptor has a 410 axle ratio, the 392 has a 4.56. And those feel a lot better going down stuff like this. Cause I'm not having to ride on the brakes nearly as much. And so if I was on a really steep hill, this one, I would definitely throw into low range before those two. And then obviously in low range with those two, you're gonna have even better ratio. And so then it's gonna feel a little bit safer overall. But again, the, the TRX handles it perfectly well. I know it might sound like I'm being critical on the truck, but I'm just trying to, you know, show you guys every possible thing on it. See, look, I can use like, I just used like 30 of the 702 horsepower there. <laughs> really? And unless you live here in Utah where we've got some wide open stuff with trails like this that are pretty typical in most places from what I've seen, you just can't really use the power. I'd be curious to see if anyone's done like a uh, caliper conversion on a TRX and because these calipers are too big for eight or for 17 inch wheels. I wonder if anyone's done a caliper conversion though to put 17 inch wheels on a TRX. I know people have put 37s on the truck. The problem with 37s on the TRX is it wasn't engineered for them. So the TRX has 13 inches of travel. You put 37s, you lose a little bit of travel. You're probably like down to like 12 or 11 inches. And then on top of that, since it wasn't engineered to have 37s, the tires just crash into the wheel wells. So that's just slowly gonna break the truck over time. So until someone, I guess, builds a proper long travel kit for the TRX, which I doubt will ever happen because nobody does this. Like, it's kind of sad. There's so many, uh, like here in Utah, for example, there are several different Raptor off-road groups. There's like one TRX group that I know of and they don't even off-road, they just street race each other, which fine, like do whatever you want if you buy this truck, but just crazy to me that people will spend you know, almost a hundred, well, over at least, or over a hundred thousand dollars now on a truck and they won't use it for what it's intended to be used for. I, I get it, the money, but at the same time, like if you're gonna spend the money, enjoy it, right? Anyways, that's gonna close off our off-road POV. The truck's great. There's some upsides and some downsides. Let me know what you guys think.